Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with Castello Wellness and Adventist Health Partners. And today we're going to talk about urinary tract infection or UTI. When a patient comes in and tells me she's had a UTI, I presume she means a bladder infection or lower urinary tract infection and not a kidney infection or pyelonephritis, which is a much more serious infection, but that is also considered a UTI or urinary tract infection. So for today's purposes, UTI means bladder infection or lower urinary tract infection. It's not uncommon for women once they reach puberty to have a periodic UTI, and it doesn't mean that's anything wrong with them. That is just something that happens more commonly in women than in men. Uh, everything that we think about UTI is related to what I call the itsy bitsy spider theory. So the itsy bitsy spider bacteria crawl up the water spout, your urethra, down comes the rain and wash the spider out. So uh, when we tell you to drink lots of liquids and to not hold your urine and to go to the bathroom on a regular basis, and to get up and urinate after relations, that's all to wash bacteria out of your bladder or the itsy bitsy spider. When you go to the doctor, they're going to do a urine dipstick test, and this is going to check for bacteria in the urine, something called leukocyte esterase, um, something called nitrite, and blood and other evidence of a UTI. They should send a urine culture, which takes a couple of days, but what happens is they take the urine and they put it on a dish and they literally wait one or two days to see if bacteria grow. They tell me which type of bacteria it is, like E. coli is an example, and they also tell me how many bacteria in CFUs, colony forming units. So to be a urinary tract infection, it has to be 50 to 100,000 CFUs. So if we had a what's called dirty catch urine, you didn't wipe really well, and I got some skin bacteria on there, you might have 10 or 25,000 bacteria, and that would actually not be the criteria for a UTI. We also, once we identify what bacteria it is, we do a sensitivity or we subject that bacteria to typical antibiotics and see which antibiotic actually kills the bacteria. It turns out now that some of our more common antibiotics like Bactrim or Sulfa or Supra or uh, Cipro are actually drug resistant. So what I used to give you for a bladder infection and could tell you 100% sure that it was going to treat it may not actually work anymore. So we're using different antibiotics, even amoxicillin uh, or a medication called Macrobid. So you want to be sure when you have a urine uh, test at the doctor that they do send a urine culture to check to see what bacteria it is and to make sure that the antibiotic they gave you is appropriate. As far as prevention of urinary tract infections, like we talked about, uh, making sure you drink lots of liquid so you go to the bathroom on a regular basis, not holding your urine all day, um, getting up after relations. We think the motion of intercourse pushes bacteria into the bladder and makes you more prone to infection called honeymoon cystitis, and these are women that get bladder infections after they have intercourse, so it's important to get up and go to the bathroom after relations. Um, taking cranberry, it's pretty common for someone to start to develop symptoms and start drinking cranberry juice, and it's not at all helpful for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that cranberry juice is basically Kool-Aid and has very little cranberry in it because it's bitter and they have to add a lot of sugar to it, so you might be getting 5 or 10%, 30% at best cranberry juice. Um, people will say, I swear it's 100% cranberry because it says 100% juice, and it turns out it's 10% cranberry and 90% apple juice because apple juice is drinkable and cranberry juice is bitter and it's not drinkable. So if you're going to do cranberry, you have to do pills or capsules, which is dried, powdered, concentrated cranberry and no sugar. Uh, the other issue is it does not work as a treatment, only as a prevention, and th that's because cranberry actually has a chemical in it that interferes with the bacteria's ability to stick to your bladder wall. So the bacteria has fimbria, or little fingers that literally grab onto and latch onto the bladder wall, and then when you go pee, it doesn't come out because it's stuck to your bladder wall. If you've been taking cranberry on a regular basis, that cranberry chemical is in the urinary bladder. When the bacteria gets there and it tries to stick to your bladder wall, it actually interferes with its ability and it doesn't make a good grasp on the batter, bladder. And then when you go to the bathroom, the urine actually washes the bacteria out, the itsy bitsy spider. So you don't need to do it in general. Do not bother doing it with acute symptoms. You need to get an antibiotic to treat that. If you have recurrent infections and there's nothing physically wrong with you, then taking cranberry pills or capsules uh, is a pretty good way to prevent uh, recurrent or at least decrease the chance of recurrent infections. 
You want to make sure that you ask for your doctor to do a urine culture. Um, it's not uncommon for some of these quick care clinics or minute clinics to not do a urine culture and then I see the patient back two or three days later and they're no better and I don't have any culture to go on to see why they're not better. So make sure you get a urine culture when you go to the doctor. Uh, there's also something called interstitial cystitis and this is a chronic inflammation of the bladder that has symptoms very similar to a UTI. It's frequency and urgency and discomfort and pelvic pressure and it seems like a bladder infection. Uh, the interesting thing is is that antibiotics have an anti-inflammatory effect and you go to the doctor with what seems like UTI symptoms, you get better on an antibiotic and now you've had one and two and three and four different UTIs when it actually was never an infection. It was this thing called interstitial cystitis. So uh, be sure to do that before they send you for any other diagnostic tests for recurrent infections. Confirm that you actually have been getting cultures and that they know that you actually are getting infections. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.